Hello, uh, I'm Ted Burnett, and I'm in downtown Mobile. It's July 15th. It's a Tuesday. Pretty nice day. Blue skies, some clouds, and we're at uh, Bienville Square, which is the main park in downtown Mobile. And at its center is a fountain and you can probably see and maybe hear the water. Um, I'm not sure the actual age of the park, but it's pretty old, well over uh, probably one or two hundred years old. Um, it is right in the middle of the business district. Mobile's downtown is made up of uh, Bankers, business workers, attorneys, uh, both the uh, state courts and the federal courts down here, as well as City Hall, uh, which is at Government Plaza, both the city and county government officials and the administrations. It's a slow summer day. Park during the spring and in the fall has a brown bag on Wednesday function. They bring in a band and people uh, set up tables and chairs or bring a lawn chair and their lunch and listen to uh, some good music. Kind of shoot around, pan the uh, park. There's no one here, not really. That's one of the uh, issues I've pointed out to our city government is that we have no tourism to speak of in the city of Mobile. It might be somewhere around 500,000 annual tourists a year. If you compare that to uh, cities with similar history and size, Savannah, it's reported, has about 11 million. Uh, Charleston, South Carolina, which is considered one of the top destinations in the country right now, has about 5 million. We do have um, new business new industry coming to town and that's um, spurring outside investment into the city. We've had a uh, one of the largest steel mills in the world built in North Mobile County. It didn't quite uh, deliver as they had hoped. We also have a uh, aluminum ship builder that uh, has a contract to make uh, warships for the U.S. government, for the Navy. And Airbus is coming to town. They're in the middle of building their manufacturing facility at Brooklyn Field, which is a former um, Air Force base that shut down in 1968. Everybody's excited about Airbus coming to town. Uh, it's bringing several hundred jobs, if not thousands, and if they can bring some suppliers to the city, that will be only that much better. But one area where we can grow our community is, is in tourism. We have some very nice hotels. We've had uh, several new hotels be built and come online. And with that, I'm going to stop and uh, reposition my camera.
We are standing on Government Street, right next door to Barton Academy, which was the first public school built in the state of Alabama. Construction began in 1835 and was finished in 1836. And this is an asset that I swing the camera that Mobile has underused in the last uh, few decades. Uh, it served as a school from the 1800s and up until I, built, I believe the 1960s before it was closed. The Mobile County Public School System then used it as its central office and it's served in that capacity until the uh, 2000s and they then bought a piece of property in West Mobile and closed this building down and it has remained empty ever since. It's a nice big <clears throat> space. Um, there's plans of putting another school in here for six through K or six through 12 for kids whose parents work for international companies here in downtown Mobile. And I'm not a big fan of that idea. Uh, one of the things that has gotten me so interested in seeing downtown Mobile uh, revived is having traveled to other southern cities. And in each of those cities, they had a college, a liberal arts college, a performing arts college that um, put uh, brought young blood from out of the uh, community, from out of the state, and in some cases from out of the region to town. And they are living uh, in the downtown area near the college, and that's one of the things that Mobile needs more uh, young people who were here going to work, going to school, and living in the downtown area. Um, given that we have the assets of the Sanger Theater and Space 301 as an art gallery and several music venues, um, to me it only makes sense that uh, we find a space whether it's Barton Academy or starting out somewhere more hum in a humble setting and start a college that uh, really draws on people's talents and less about their um, capacity to um, uh, their, their capacity to pass tests. Um, I think America is um, either going to go away as every other prior empire has or we're going to have a rebirth a renaissance and that renaissance will be of art and literature and music and philosophy uh, and not of capitalism not of banking that uh, two systems have run their course in America. They're, they're both bankrupt. So America is trying to find its way right now. The city of Mobile is trying to find its way. While it has these new industries that have come to town over the past decade, and Airbus is coming too, um, we need more than just industry. We need something that um, really taps into people's heart and soul, 
things that uh, move people, whether it's uh, great art, whether it's great literature, great music. And so um, something like um, a, a school, a graduate school at a, a collegiate level, uh, I think is necessary uh, for Mobile to, um, to take off. And um, I've seen it in Charleston with the College of Charleston with um, St. Augustine Flagler College and Savannah with SCAD. And Mobile needs a, this same uh, uh, academic uh, setting institution in downtown Mobile. We have three, uh, two universities and one college, whether they want to participate in, in making something like that uh, take off is to be seen. But um, without a college in downtown Mobile, um, there's just not enough uh, housing for families and with kids. Um, there's plenty of empty buildings, plenty of uh, room for uh, dorms, for apartments, for condos, uh, for single people, for young people, but um, there's some limitations to how many families can and will live downtown. It's um, 9.30 and we're on Dolphin Street. Right here where Joachim and Dolphin Street come together. We got some vacant spaces to my left. Looks like an eyeglass store was supposed to come in this spring. Maybe it's still coming. One thing you can clearly see is there's not really anybody here on the uh, sidewalks. I was just talking to a couple from Fairhope. Uh, across the street, Crockmeyer's uh, remodeled this building. It took them several years, and they moved in and opened in the past year or two, and they're doing pretty well. I did not pay them to walk through my shot. across the street and next door to Mama's is a vacant space. If you shoot down the other way to the uh, east of Dolphin Street. Um, much of the same. Here's some great uh, mobile architecture that's been uh, restored. It's got some a couple of galleries on the bottom, maybe some law offices as well. And up top, looks like people are living there. All right, next to the uh, architecture I just showed you of art museums, hey, and, good, 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 and uh, law offices. <laughs> I can't afford to do that. <laughs> um, 
to the uh, west of those nice, nicely refurnished buildings is uh, this building, which is owned by a friend of mine. And uh, he's told me a little bit about the uh, story to try to uh, remodel it and get it open. But um, anyway, he's having problems. But um, in this case, this is art on the building instead of art inside the building. The street actually looks a whole lot better than it did 20 years ago, so it's making a lot of progress. We, uh, we know about it, <laughs> just most people driving down I-10 uh, from Louisiana, Mississippi to on to the beaches of Alabama and Florida, they don't know about it, and that's hurting us. They got money and they're taking it to the beach to spend when they sh we need to get some of that. We're at the uh, corner of South Washington and Dolphin Street, and uh, this is one of the uh, latest restaurants to open in what had been a vacant building for quite some time. It's a popular barbecue chain out of Colorado. On this side of the street is a couple other restaurants that are popular with the locals and have been open for a decade maybe. It's uh, right uh, at lunchtime, I guess after 11 o'clock, and you don't see much uh, sideway, sidewalk traffic. And this is uh, lost revenue, lost tax dollars for the hotels, for the city to collect, uh, restaurants, uh, all sorts of uh, museums, and of course we need more retail to come back down here, but there's no incentive at this point. I am uh, here at the top of uh, Dolphin Street where it crosses Broad Street and continues west. I'm actually on the back side of the former American Red Cross. Um, this building is an example of uh, what needs to either be uh, remodeled or torn down because it is one heck of an eyesore for ne nearby businesses and residents. Um, this is one of several buildings that's uh, vacant on Dolphin Street and has to be addressed. Uh, obviously a lot of things could go in this space. I'll leave it at that. We're here at the uh, Sanger Theater, which is on Joachim Street, just off of Dolphin Street. And it's one of three theaters the Sanger family built. Uh, the other two, one's in New Orleans and one's in Pensacola. Uh, built probably around 1910. Used for um, live theater, for music, musicals, symphonies. Today it's uh, continued to be used for uh, musicals and symphonies and maybe some live theater. Uh, not sure how well it's used as one of Mobile's assets. Uh, they've had trouble making money using it in recent years. However, I did mention uh, 
uh, that if Mobile were to have a college downtown, some sort of performing arts college that uh, where music is offered or theater or, or dance, that the Sanger would be a nice asset that's already built that that college could use. So, I also think, um, you know, one of the things Mobile's missing in downtown, besides tourists, is a reason to come to downtown in a large uh, scale uh, by the millions. And that's that there's a, a world-class venue, whether it's um, the Sanger Theater, which is a building, and it's housing some sort of uh, uh, the, uh, theatrical troupe that's uh, permanently housed here, that um, you know, gives something to the community as well as gives uh, people a reason to come to Mobile. Maybe they live in Baton Rouge or New Orleans or M Montgomery, Birmingham, Atlanta, and they uh, hear about this uh, production company, this theater group, and uh, they want to see it for themselves. So having a world-class venue is uh, very important for Mobile to ever have some sort of uh, serious tourism uh, base. Uh, every city has one, two, or more than two. And, um, and if they um, uh, have old ones, they're building new ones. Atlanta's always building new uh, exhibits and, and venues to uh, bring tourists to their airport and up into the city for the summer or year-round. So anyway, that's uh, to me what's really lacking. And I'm not sure the Sanger's going to solve that, fix that problem, but it certainly something worth looking at. All right, uh, I'm at the uh, Crescent Theater, which is located at 208 Dolphin Street. And it's been open for about five, uh, five six, seven years. And it is a uh, landmark, soon to be famous, place to uh, come to Mobile and while you're in town, maybe staying downtown, or you're just uh, having dinner on Dolphin Street or around the corner to come watch a film at the Crescent Theater. Uh, the proprietor is Max Morey. And most of the films that Max picks are independent films. Many of them are nonfiction, and, uh, and of those that play here at this playhouse, many of them have already won awards at film festivals around the country, around the world, and ultimately, many of them are nominated for Oscars, uh, for the Academy Awards that happened in the uh, early spring. So they're great films, and more importantly, they're soulful films. And that's one of the issues that Mobiles really has a problem with. There just seems to be no soul in this uh, town that I can find, no sense of uh, where the heartbeat is, where the epicenter, of the city is and what Max is doing and the films that he selects are just uh, can be tear jerkers, can be very uh, emotional uh, stories that some film director often with no money uh, puts together and produces and, uh, you know, they're just compelling stories that people need to see and hear. And that's what I've always gotten from 
the films that Max has selected at the Crescent Theater. It's, uh, it's, it's a theater that's never made any money in Mobile, and, um, and I don't know why. Uh, it's kind of the uh, best kept secret, and it's to its own detriment. It really, uh, the word needs to be gotten out that this place is really uh, something that needs to be saved and cherished and uh, you know that too many people who um, either don't go see movies at all or they go see the big blockbusters that you know are all about making hundreds of millions of dollars and soulless in their nature uh, attend those or, or people that just have no desire to be inspired and I say that of our own uh, political officials, our new mayor, Mayor Stimson, he, he's been given tickets to come to this theater and he won't come. Free tickets. Uh, I don't think the city council's been down here. I could be wrong about that. But there are those on uh, Dolphin Street who do get what uh, the Crescent's about. Um, the stories of people who go stay at hotels in here on business and, um, and they find out about the Crescent um, they keep coming back when they come to Mobile and they're staying in a hotel downtown. So um, I hope uh, if you've never tried the Crescent, you will, um, you will come down here and give it a shot. That was um, Max just walking out of the front door. <laughs> so uh, anyway, with that, we wind it. We're here on uh, Dolphin Street and Water Street, and we're looking at the RSA Tower, uh, also known as the Battle House Hotel and RSA Tower, which is owned by the Retirement Systems of Alabama. Off to the left, is the back side of the Battle House, which faces Royal Street. The original Battle House built by the Battle family was built in 1850 and then uh, caught, caught on fire and burned down around the turn of the century. This is the second Battle House and it opened around 1910 and closed in 1970. It was almost torn down, but it was saved. It was closed until this project of the RSA Tower was uh, proposed and construction began on the tower and building or renovating the Battle House. This building is the tallest. East of Houston. The tallest building in Alabama. And to the east, it faces the Alabama State Docks and its container facility. On the Mobile River. And adjacent to it is the Convention Center. So uh, this is a sign of new, new growth and development in downtown Mobile, as well as the refurbishing of a uh, historic hotel and 
most uh, everyone in Mobile is uh, happy to see this hotel, the Battle House, back open. Okay, we're here at Spanish Plaza, right here off Government Street. Mobile needs three things in order to have a successful downtown. First, it needs a college, liberal arts, or a performing arts college, one or the other. Two, we need a world-class venue. Uh, any city worth its salt, any city with a real tourism base has one, two, maybe three venues or more, and they're building more. So we need at least one good one. And third, if we don't have the venue, we at least need a world-class experience. We need to be able to come downtown and we need a meeting place. There is no real place for a mix of uh, black and white and people getting to know each other in this town and uh, you know an open market of some sort or or whatever where there's just interaction in the daytime particularly not so much about night but um, a world-class experience and uh, you, it's one of those things you don't just put it in your marketing brochure and that becomes uh, the truth the experience is just something you just you, you 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 go do it and you know that it's just fed you in a way that had you not ever gone to this um, venue you, you you wouldn't know um, that you were missing something. So you know you can go to Bourbon Street in the middle of the day, eat lunch, go eat beignets, go shopping, go look at the artwork. You can spend 10, 20 bucks on lunch and look at everything else and get back in your car after two hours and you've had an experience. You've, you've done something, you watched people, you read, uh, looked at the t-shirts and the t-shirt shops, you've checked out the fashion, the clothes and retail shops and uh, the artwork. So that's an experience and um, you know, in New York, it can be walking through Central Park. Um, you know, San Francisco it could be going up into wine country and doing a tour. It really doesn't matter what um, the experience is. I would just advocate that it be authentic and unique to Mobile. We, we can't have things that are rep easily uh, copied. Uh, like IMAX, IMAX in Pensacola, it's in uh, Atlanta, New Orleans, and it loses its uh, ab ability to attract tourists if they can go do it in their own hometown. So a college, world-class venue, meaning a building with some sort of um, theatrical troupe or production that just gets written up in, in the magazines and websites and, and, it's, and it's bringing people to town who would otherwise not come to town. And we have a lot of people coming down I-65 and I-10 who uh, have money and they're headed somewhere to spend it and we need to be uh, getting them off the interstate and into our downtown to spend the night in our hotels and eating in our restaurants and, and, and shopping. Uh, tourism in Mobile is about a half a million uh, people a year business. Uh, Charleston, South Carolina, which is considered the top city in the country in tourism, is about a five million dollar, uh, five million uh, visitor business. Uh, Savannah's 11 million. St. Augustine, with its uh, with the fort and the old town, 
and Flagler College and all of his assets that he put there, uh, a hotel, a church, a uh, city, what is now City Hall. It's just, um, it's beautiful to go to these cities and see, feel the energy of seeing all these people uh, as tourists or students or residents. And um, there's no reason why we can't be doing that ourselves. There's no reason why we can't put artists on the streets, musicians on the streets, and soften this town up. We have a downtown that's full of concrete, brick, steel, glass, asphalt, and a few trees and some grass. But it's a very hard, it's a hard surface, and we need to put uh, artists and musicians and and poets and philosophers out on the street and enjoy each other's time and, and maybe um, sell some uh, artwork and, and music in, in the process. All right, we're here on Government Street at 205 Government Street, which is home to Government Plaza. Uh, City Hall, both the city and county officials, and, and the administration. Um, it is um, their responsibility to make the city uh, and county work, to um, base reality to the problems that the city has and the county has respectfully um, and not to uh, escape from reality create one's own reality whether they're the mayor they're a council member but to simply solve the real problems that exist and that's why they were elected and put into office and like their peers in Montgomery and Washington they can easily forget about um, who it is they're serving whether they're serving their constituents or they're simply serving themselves paying a little bit big old building if, if uh, referred to as the R2-D2 building, it in no way fits within the historic uh, district that it stands in. But of course they expect those who have historic property to uh, maintain their historic property up to code. Anyway, if, um, if you like some of my ideas, I would highly encourage you to contact the mayor's office, contact your council member. Um, you know, one person can make a difference. So I write to uh, the city council all the time, right to the mayor's office all the time, uh, to our congressional delegation, our congressman Bradley Byrne, to Jeff Sessions, and to Richard Shelby. So if I could do it, I know you can. And just empowering, you know, rather than um, you know sit around with friends or family and complain about what's going on in Washington, what's going on in Montgomery, what's going on in Mobile. The ability to uh, put together a, a uh, nice email, a nice letter and uh, drop it in the mail and uh, ask questions. Um, you know, they're a representative. They, they're not kings and queens. You know, these are not prince and princesses. They serve us, and if we have a problem and they're not responsive, 
to um, the issues that we're bringing up, that's not a reflection on you. That's a reflection on them. And, um, and when it comes to voting at election time again, you need to remember you know, who, who, um, who helped you and who didn't.